In this video, we'll take a look at how we can understand the Security Directory Server, or SDS, using the Sample Database. So as we saw in a previous video, I'll go here, IBM Security Directory Server, and launch the Instance Administration Tool, or IAT. And I'm going to click this first entry and then Manage, and then I'll click Manage Suffixes. And if you download this free red book from IBM, you'll see that this is the DIT, and you'll see from this website that the DIT is actually this tree and that the base of that tree is also called the suffix and it's also called the root which means that this the directory root is the suffix now each of these are called entries they're also known as rdns or relative distinguished names you can think of each entry as an object each object has an attribute and a value that is the attribute value pair each RDN may have a single value, or it can be multi-valued. If you just have an RDN, like O equals IBM, you really can't locate this inside the tree unless this is unique. So to uniquely identify a given object, you refer to its multiple RDNs. So this entry is CN equals mbarlin, and then OU equals marketing, and then O equals IBM, and then top. Although usually top is not included in the DN. And when you string all of those RDNs together, you get a distinguished name or DN, which might look something like this. Now, the attributes that you can use in an entry are defined inside a schema. Attributes are organized together in something called an object class. That organization is done through a definition, and the definition uses ASN.1. Here is an example of an ASN.1 definition for object class country. This first entry is an OID or object identifier, followed by a name and a description. The SUP stands for superior, and it indicates that there is a parent. Structural means that this entry will be part of the DIT structure, meaning one of these. Must means that this attribute here must be provided when an entry is created. So if you created an actual entry, it might look like this with C colon space US. This is required because it was defined with must. And that's opposed to may, which is optional. The parentheses here indicate that you have more than one attribute. This is the first one. This is the second one. And they're separated by a dollar sign. And in this previous example, you don't see any optional attributes, but you do see object class, which refers to country, and you don't see soup. And soup, or sub for superior, is usually implied, which is why it's not here. But you do see the DN, or distinguished name, because there's only one US in that entire hierarchy. So if we go back to SDS and look at the managed suffixes, this should make more sense. And here we can see localhost, IBM policies, and deleted objects. If you wanted to know more about localhost, you could query it with an LDAP search, which does exactly what it says. It'll search through your LDAP DIT. The dash D stands for bind, which means login. That is defined here. Notice that the bind sends the DN of the entry that will be used for authentication. So in other words, our entry, our username, is CN equals root. Dash W is a password that you provide at the command prompt. If you want LDAP search to prompt you for a password, it's a capital W to type in. Dash S indicates the scope. There are four main kinds of scope, sub, base, one, and children. Sub is usually the most useful because it starts at whatever entry you're at and searches down recursively in the tree from there. The where you're at is determined by a dash B, which indicates the base. That's not the base, that's the root or suffix of your DIT. It's the entry from which you will do your searching. So in our case, we're saying CN equals localhost. And that's because we wanted to match this suffix here. The last piece is called the filter. Here you can see that their purpose is to search a directory for entries that match a specific criteria. In our example, we're just searching for a single filter. But you can do more advanced searches that include an OR, which look like this and are enclosed inside these parentheses. You can also do AND with an ampersand. So let's try this. I'll go ahead and hit enter and notice what you get for a result. So at this point, we've found the results for just localhost. So if you wanted to get more than just localhost, you can repeat this search by removing the contents of the base. 
And now we're looking at something special called the root DSE. And this is a way to look at the entire structure inside your DIT. And if you use an LDAP browser like this one, you can see all of the suffixes available for browsing when you leave the search base blank and look for root DSE. So now that we've covered all that, we can look at the sample database. To do that, go to the suffix DN, type O equals, and then sample, and click on add. Now click on OK. Go ahead and stop the server. Then go ahead and start it back up. And you have created the suffix. But watch what happens if I try to search for O equals sample. We get no such object. And that's because we've created the database, but we don't have any data in it. So let's confirm that. So if I do a cat Etsy password, we'll see our database user, and we can see the groups that that person is in, and we can switch to that user. That will let us do a listing of the DB2 directories, and that command shows us the databases. Notice that the DS stands for the directory server, and LDAP stands for the proxy server. So to use a GUI client for DB2, we need to find the port. To do that, we run this command, that tells us this is the service. Then we cat Etsy services, and we see that we can open 3766. So I open Data Studio, type in these values, click on Test Connection. Then I expand all these out, and you'll see we don't have tables. And the reason for that is because we need to be in the Administration Explorer view. And now I can expand this out and go to Tables. And you'll see a table that's called O. And if you right-click and go down to Data and then Browse, you'll see that it's blank. And it's not until you start your directory service that this table fills in with data. And notice there's C and CN, but what we want to do now is fill in the data. So be sure you've created this O equals suffix, click OK, and now go down to LDIF and then import. LDIF files are text files that let you add entries and especially add entries in bulk to the DIT. But LDIF files, depending on the command you used, whether it's LDAP modifier, LDAP add, also let you delete and modify these entries. For our purposes, this is the sample.ldiff that comes with SDS. And here is what it looks like. You can see OECO sample, the object classes, and all of these components we've talked about. And the way you use this is to import it by clicking on browse, giving it that path, and then clicking on import. Now click yes to this. And then once that works, you should see task completed, 50 entries have been added. And now if I right click this table and refresh, we'll see our sample data. Go to CN and right click, go to data and browse. We'll see these entries and we can confirm that these came from our LDAP by doing a search, say for Keller. And there we go. And now if you make sure that you've started your server and you load the root DSE, take a look at these entries, including now sample. And hopefully at this point, it makes sense what you're seeing. O equals sample, that's an entry. You can see it's object class. We see top, we see organization. We know those are structural. You can open up OU for Austin. This is another entry. And if you drill down, you can see Bill Keller. This is what we saw earlier, but now presented nicely in this graphical browser. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how the sample database works, how the LDAP works sort of in general, and how you can browse your data and how that data comes from DB2.